you welcome to a uh, third part of my talk and uh, as i promise uh, we'll talk more about zoonosis and the spread of stigils you know the 20th century saw a uh, extraordinary ecological change the several decreases in natural habitat and biodiversity as well as equally uh, substantial increases in people and domestic animals never before have there been a so many chances for infections to spread from wild and domestic animals to human via biophysical environment resulting in genetic illness or genosis as a result there has been an upsurge in genetic illnesses and food borne genosis globally emerging illnesses have cost more than 100 billion dollar in direct expenditures during the previous two decades Around 60% of all viral illnesses in human are genotic, including the newly found virus COVID. So the question is, uh, what exactly are genosis? Okay, a genosis is an infectious illness that may be passed from animals to humans. Genetic diseases can be bacterial, viral, or parasitic, or they might include unusual agents, and they can transmit to people by direct contact, or through food, drink, or the environment. Ebola, avian flu, uh, 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 what we call MERS, or what we call Middle East Respiratory Syndromes, uh, 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 Rift Valley fever, sudden acute respiratory syndromes, that's called SARS, West Nile viruses, and Zika virus. Illness are a few examples. Foodborne pathogens such as Salmonella and Listeria bacteria, which are transmitted from animal to human, produce another significant group of genetic illnesses so environmental changes or ecological disturbances such as agriculture uh, agricultural intensifications and human settlement or encroachment into forest and other ecosystem are frequently related with emergence of genetic illnesses genesis are also opportunistic you know, affecting hosts who are already stressed due to health, environmental, social, or economic factors. Genesis are more common in intensively framed animals. Inter sorry, intensively what we call the formed animals, which are typically genetically identical within a herd or flock and hence lack the genetic vari variety that give resilience as a result of being selected for production rather than disease resistance. The most notable example is bird flu, also known as avian influenza, which originally circulated in wild birds before infecting domestic poultry and eventually spreading to the people. On a broader level, scientists look at the short of changes that allow virulent diseases to make a new migration from animal host to human host. Number one, changes in the environment. Okay. Number two, changes in the host. And number three, change in the pathogen right so first is the change in the environment 
which are often the consequence of human activity, ranging from land use changes to climate change, encroachment of natural ecosystem by resource extractions, agricultural activities, and human settlement creates possibility for infection to spread from wild animal to humans. Particularly when a uh, natural disease resistance that uh, you know may emerge from rich biological diversity is lost. Climate change is another environmental issue. It is a key contributor to disease emergence. It has, uh, you know, an impact on environmental circumstances that can permit or hinder the survival, reproduction, abundance, and dispersion of diseases, vectors, hosts, as well as the mode of disease transmission and the frequency of outbreaks. Okay, like milk and meat consumption is expected to treble by 2050 driven mostly by rapidly rising urban populations in emerging nations demand for animal products drives more intensive farming which means you know the larger population of high yielding genetically related cattle capped close together. Increased fertilizers uses and livestock waste output, which can result in nutrient rich ecosystem that favor particular diseases. Okay, you got a point? Now, changes in human host behavior, which are drivers of new genetic diseases are another aspect. These include travels, war, migration, wildlife trafficking, globalization, urbanization, and changing food choices. So the thought, uh, uh, so the infections themselves changes as they develop to exploit new hosts, which is final component to consider. One example is the rise of antimicrobial uh, medication resistance. Antimicrobial resistance develops as a result of microorganisms being exposed to antimicrobial medications and developing resistance over the course of their, you know, brief life. This is most likely when patients are prescribed antimicrobial or purchase them without a prescription and you know self treat you know um, improperly okay we have you know just seen the general picture of this spread uh, there are you know various small elements at uh, work at individual level uh, these elements will be discussed in this and subsequent slides. Uh, the, the first is direct and indirect touch. Coming into touch with an infected animal saliva, blood, urine, mucus, uh, uh, feces, or other, you know, uh, uh, body's fluid in uh, referred to, uh, is referred to as a direct contact, okay? petting or touching animals as well as bites or scratches are those things. Coming into contact with uh, regions where animals reside and wander or uh, items or surfaces infected with germs is one example of indirect contact. Aquarium tank water, pet homes, poultry coops, barns, plants, and soils, as well as pet food, water disease, are all other examples. So other causes includes 
uh, vector bond, food bond, and water bond disease. Being bitten by tick or an insect, that also the one of the reason, such as mosquitoes or fleas, is uh, how a vector is born. So food bond instances include eating or drinking anything unhealthy, such as um, unpasteurized uh, milk or raw milk, undercooked meat or eggs, or raw fruits and vegetables contaminated with, you know, ex excrement from the infected animals, uh, drinking or coming into touch with the water, tainted with uh, feces uh, uh, from an infected animals, in one example of the uh, waterborne infection. So, uh, who are the victims? To be honest, anyone, including healthy people, can become ill from a genetic illness. Some people, however, are more vulnerable than others and should take precautions to safeguard themselves or family members. Children under the age of five, adults over the age of uh, 65, persons from compromised immune system and pregnant women are among those who fall into this category. Market, market sellings, wild animal meats or byproducts are especially dangerous on a larger scale due to enormous number of new or unreported viruses known to occur in some wild animal populations. Agricultural workers in place where antibiotics are often used on farm animals may be more vulnerable to infections, infections resistant to existing antimicrobial treatments. People who live near uh, who live near uh, you know wilderness regions or uh, in semi urban settings uh, with a high concentration of wild animals are at danger of contracting illness from animals such as rats foxes and raccoons by increasing interaction between humans and wild animals urbanizations and the uh, degradation of natural ecosystem raise the danger of genetic illnesses. The most crucial aspect is how we can save and protect ourselves in the that I will explain in next few slides. So far, we have seen how our bad health, terrible environment, and genesis all contributed to the formation of COVID-19. As stated in the pa last part, we shall examine how this spread may be restricted in next slides. Okay? So many incidents of endemic genetic illness, such as pig tape worm and rabies, have been successfully managed. Right? Several affluent nations have reduced genetic foodborne illness in very sh uh, short periods of time by adopting control measures all throughout the food value chain with a focus on disease reduction in the animal host. Okay, so genesis management necessitates as an integrated cross-sectoral strategy. At the global level, Three organizations have genetic disease mandates. The World Health Organization, that is WHO, the World Animal Health Organization, OIE, and the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, in short, what is a FAO. WHO warned the globe um, in 2003 that a severe acute respiratory illness with an unknown etiology was quickly spreading from Southeast Asia. Within six months, this wholly new disease had been recognized as coronavirus. Its transmission and risk factors have been found, therapies have been devised, and the disease progress had been halted. So another approach, in ecosystem integrity is a key factor in the 
innovative approaches taken by one health and eco health initiatives that are spearheading genesis control at regional and national level it help uh, it, it, it help regulate it help in regulating diseases by supporting a diversity of species so that it is more difficult for one pathogen to spread rapidly or dominate once separating human from animals or from pathogens that they harbor are notably reduced or lost there are also been a surge in novel survival surveillance of wildlife and livestock health and reporting tools that draw a wide range of field reports another strategy is ecosystem integration which is a crucial aspect in uh, the creating tactics adopted by usa one health and eco health projects that are leading the charge against genosis at the regional and national levels it aids in the disease regulation by fostering a diverse range of organisms making it more difficult for a single pathogen to expand fast or dominate humans are significantly decreased or lost once separated from animals or diseases that they harbor so there are also been an increase in unique wildlife and livestock health surveillance and reporting methods that rely on a diverse set, say, uh, diverse uh, set of field reports okay. so a prudent legal and legislative framework well functioning institutions enough funding quick detections and an intervention execution plan are required for successful genosis management multidisciplinary and translational collaborations transnational collaborations will also be required to investigate the relationship between environmental dynamics disease vectors infections and human vulnerability we you know we now know that people can come into touch with animal in a variety of settings right this covers both at home and in public settings such as you know petting zoos fairs uh, schools businesses and parks etc insects such as mosquitoes and fleas fleas uh, as well as you know ticks attack people and animals during all hours of the day and night fortunately there are precautions we may take to protect ourselves and our family against genotic infections and those are keep hands clean stay safe around your pets uh, keep pets and their supplies out of the kitchen prevent bite from mosquitoes ticks and fleas avoid bite and scratches from the animals don't uh, don't kiss or snuggle or hold rodents reptiles amphibians and poultry close to your face enjoy wildlife from safe distance to avoid illness and injury so in this part we explore genosis its kinds and uh, how it spreads at both the larger and even individual levels we have also seen several well known cases of genotic illness we have also uh, spoken about uh, how several uh, you know international organizations are fighting to restrict its spread and what we can do as an individual to protect ourselves so in the next and last portion we will go through the recently discovered a uh, genetic illness covid 19 so see you in the next part thank you